NHL Derek Bugard was found dead in his Minnesota home Friday, just 28 years old. The cause of death unknown at this hour, but some believe it may be linked to the repeated brain trauma on the ice. He was pretty much a brawler. Derek's family has donated his brain to research because they have the same hunch to figure out if that indeed is true. Joining us right now is the director for the Institute for Neurosciences at Northwest, North, Northern West, uh, Westchester Hospital, Dr. Ed Cornell, who's also a neurosurgeon. Welcome, doctor. Pleasure to be here with you. Well, let's take a look right now at images of a normal brain that you see on a daily basis. And just tell us things that's significant about that. These are the CT uh, e, uh, brain scan images. The study on the left shows a normal brain and we see the microscopic vision on the le on the lower part of the screen and that shows that looks the good, brain right? cells are normal. Now if you look at the middle image you're seeing uh, a slice of the brain and you see that that area that the brownish area and that's an abnormal area related to trauma. This is from an athlete who's had repeated trauma and you see the, Below that, the brain cells now, you see those spots, and those are abnormal tangles of brain cells. And then further to the right is a boxer who, uh, re who retired, and then they got his brain. And you see there's even more damage in that lower image with so many uh, spots there in the... Uh, Right. slices of the brain. So Derek's brain, uh, 28 years old, you wouldn't expect somebody to die suddenly. We're trying to find out probably within two weeks what happened. But when you see his track record and the fact that he was fighting a lot, does that make you suspicious right away? Well, what they're really looking for is to see if there has been damage to the brain from protracted injuries, from multiple concussions. It's not so much if he died from that. It's more because we want to understand what happens when there is a concussion, especially when there are multiple right. concussions. Now, with the reason why I think this is important, besides, you know, you don't want to see anyone die, and he's got a lot of fans, I'm talking about the high school kid playing uh, any sport at any level right now. What makes you think they're, you told me before the show, they're even more susceptible than the pros? Sure, the kids have a developing brain. And so the areas for speech, for motor control, aren't fully formed yet. Memory. So if, Memory is, of course, very important, ability to have higher reasoning. So if you damage those areas, you're going to have problems developing those, those abilities as you get older. And usually the uh, equipment isn't as good. When you get to the pros, you've got the best of the best of the it, best. With everyone cutting back on budgets, guess what? Maybe the helmets aren't as great. You're right. They're not getting the best equipment necessarily. Plus, they're not as well trained as a professional athlete as to how to avoid head injuries and the coaches and the other team members don't know how to recognize a concussion as readily. So it's really important for the coaches to be able to recognize when a kid has a significant head injury. It doesn't mean you've been knocked out. You don't have to be out to have a concussion. You be a little dazed, a little loss of coordination, a little bit of fogginess is enough to be able to right. define it as a concussion. Well, that's a good thing, and I know, Doctor, you'll be looking at this study because the whole world's watching this, especially the, the game of hockey's watching this, so we could take what they learned from the 28-year-old's brain and put it to the everyday person. It's very important to understand this to avoid injuries to athletes and to others who have head injuries in general. Right. Great. Dr. Cornell, thanks so much. Pleasure to be here All with right. you. Nice to see you.